Well, you can be seated. I'm going to tell you why you need to cry out louder. I'm getting ready to explain it to you. I'm going to tell you why that it's very important that God's people begin to participate with what God wants. Listen, come on now. People, it, it, it's just, it's not that difficult. Father made it very clear what His purpose for us to be and do in this earth. What His purpose for us to be and do with our lives forever. He made it, he made it, known, in, he made it known when He came and He took on... Uh, the robes of human flesh and was made like a servant for us so that he could bear our sins away on a tree called Calvary. See, folks have lost the, the, the beauty and the, and, and the call of what Father's purposed us to step into. Jesus bore our sins in his own body on the tree that we being now dead to sin might live unto righteousness. There's no, I, there, is no such, there is no such thing as the blood of Jesus cleansing people from sin that don't want to be cleansed from sin. <laughs> and that shouldn't sound like too much of a paradox. P it, Jesus Christ came to deliver folks out of, the, out of the stronghold of the powers of darkness that no longer wanted to live under that stronghold. People that want to continue in sin and want to continue to live out a demon-possessed life in a demon-possessed world ultimately are going to have to make a decision as to whether or not their desire is heaven or hell. You know, people say, oh, you don't know the hell I'm, I'm living in. Well, look, you chose most of the hell you're living in. Really, it's true. By and large, people choose the hell that they're living in. And the Lord's not interested in us, you know, occupying a place with Him where that uh, He's got to participate with our hell. He's invited us to come be one with Him. So that we can participate with his heaven. Amen. You know, those of you reading through the Bible right now, you're discovering that when people sin, they produce a lot of, they create a lot of shame and a lot of reproach. And if there's anything that people ought to get is when David sinned with Bathsheba, look at the door he opened up for destruction. How two of his sons died as a result of it. A daughter basically was destroyed as a result of it. When you look at people not trusting the Lord like they said, the biggest shame that Abraham had in his life was not trusting the Lord on two different occasions for Father to keep him. And then ultimately he almost caused somebody else to do a great transgression because, you know, he thought, well, I better tell them that Sarah is my sister because she's so beautiful. It's just not trusting the Lord and it created a shame. It's probably one of the biggest shames of Abraham's life. And when you read it, it's sometimes it's like, oh, my goodness, look at this. I mean, you've got to get through God's dealings pretty much. You've got to get out of Deuteronomy, Numbers. You've got to get out of 1 Samuel, 2 Samuel, and 1 and 2 Kings, and 1 and 2 Chronicles to get over to something good. <laughs> because really all that is is primarily a story about the, how, how people don't want to walk with God and do what's right. Genesis, Exodus. Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, 1st, 2nd Samuel, 1st, 2nd Kings, 1st, 2nd Chronicles. It's just a full-on shame. It's just one thing after another. And the Lord, just, the Lord just, he basically in his mercy just stands back. Listen, I want you to pay attention to me. Everybody wants you to listen to me. I want to just, I want to gather you up into a place to understand that the powers of darkness have moved into the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, and there's, very, there's a very small remnant of what used to be in the Pentecostal movement, where there was the great outpourings of the Holy Ghost and fire, signs and wonders and miracles, and the flowing forth of the demonstration of the gifts of the Spirit and the great manifest presence of, of, uh, of the Lord in the place. Everybody has gone to their own tent, turned to their own way, seek their own things, seeking their own pleasure. And it's about time God's people would just really get, they get desperate. You know, one of the verses of Scripture that stands out to me right now that I want to just open up with, and this isn't where I'm going, but in the midst of <clears throat> all of Israel's rejection, I mean, I, look, people said, well, if I could see God, I'd believe. No, you wouldn't. Because Israel saw God and they didn't believe. The proof is there. It, it just, it's just, come on, give me a break. The proof is there. And Numbers chapter 14 really, you know, kind of emphasizes that. 
in such a radical way. Um, you know, here God has shown His glory, shown His grace, has shown His mercy, mighty signs, wonders, revealed Himself, spoke with an audible voice, and they still rejected Him. And basically what He says, His response is verse 21. He says, truly as I live, He says, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord. The prophets come along and say, the, the glory of the Lord, the, the earth should be filled with the glory of the Lord like the waters cover the oceans. I mean, the whole earth is going to be baptized in his presence. I'm going to tell you right now, there's not going to be one room, one little teeny bit of a place for hatred, not one place for immorality, not one place for iniquity or whatever sin it is that you like, not one place for drunkenness, not one per place for any kind of evil or any kind of iniquity. So for me, when I hear Papa talking about his glory going to fill the whole earth, I'm excited because I love the presence of the living God. Hallelujah. Basta karanea pai. Bondarastek ili makasatea. Membrasuti kanamosebeke ataatese. Now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, there's the powers of darkness that have tried to lay claim upon you. I take authority over them by that wonderful name of Jesus. Now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, for everybody who wants to be set free and for everyone who wants to be cleansed by the blood of the Lamb, I tell you, He's come with His blood to sprinkle you, hallelujah, with the life of His goodness and the life of His presence and the life of His power so that everything about your life will be changed. It's not, you know, just going to a confession booth. Okay, I'm, I'm done some sins. I'm going to go to a confession booth and I'm going to go ahead and get my sins cleansed so that I can go ahead and live my life and continue on doing whatever it was that I like doing that is opposed to God. Well, that's nonsense. The Lord redeemed us by the blood of Jesus so that we could live a heavenly life, so we could live in a new kind of life. So where I want to go here is I want you to open your Bibles with me to 2 Peter Chapter 3, I want to show you some things that is important for God's people to grab a hold of. Um, listen, if you're, not, if, you're not, if you're not looking for the Lord Jesus Christ to come, you're not ready for him to come. Let me just try to make it simple. The Lord said uh, to have our belts on and our lights burning. And, and as I ministered to you the last time we were together in Luke chapter 12, and verse 35. So that, so that you're ready. You don't have to make any preparation. When he comes and he knocks, as it, as it were, at the door, you're ready, you're, ready, you're ready right there to open up the door and immediately go with them wherever you know, he wants you to go. And, of course, we know what that is. That's the catching away. And um, if you're not living that way, if he said, blessed are those whom the Lord shall find waiting and watching when he comes. Because then he's going to take you. He's going to sit down and he's... He's going to sit you down in a place that he's going to serve you. He's going to minister to you. and He's going to bless you with everything that uh, Father has promised to ha us to have throughout the ages to come. And it's amazing that Father would be, become our servant. And so what, 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 are we going to, what are we going to do in participating with him right now? With the slight that he's given to us. It's just a very short span of time that we have on this earth. And... Um, you know, we, our days can easily be consumed with our own interest. Our lives can easily be, be consumed with the things that we feel it's urgent to get done. Because, of course, we have rent to pay and our mortgage to pay. And we've got things that we've got to, you know, take care of for our own earthly interest. But Father's not interested in your own earthly interest. He's actually said concerning the person who is consumed with their own earthly earthly interest that that person will not be ready when he comes he describes that in Matthew chapter 25 concerning the person who he gave one talent to it's a talent of finances as it were just using fin the financial means of, of, of having money to invest and make money with he, he uses that as an allegory to talk about the kingdom of God and the things that belong to the kingdom of God having been entrusted unto us. And now what are we going to do with it? What are we going to do with that which he's entrusted unto us? And there was one person who he entrusted the things of the kingdom uh, to. It basically, basically, he said, well, you know, I've got my own job to do. I've got my own life to live. I've got my own things that I've got to take care of. And I'm just going to take what you've given it to me, given to me. I'm going to wrap it up and I'm going to put it in the earth so that when you come, you can have whatever it is that you gave to me. Because I'm really not interested. 
in the life that you called me to live, a life that is following you, a total abandonment to the things that this world would pressure me to do and pressure me to have, that, that just a common, normal type of lifestyle dictates that this is what we're all supposed to participate with. Our culture says you're supposed to do all of these things. And so until you've had an encounter with God, you think you're supposed to go do all of these things. And somebody said, what things? The things you're doing. You're supposed to go and, and live your life according to um, the dictates of culture. And, and watch out because if you're not careful, you're going to think that you're not living your lives according to the dictate of culture. And then you can't hear anything that God's trying to tell you. But when you have an encounter with God, suddenly you see that there is another realm to live in. Suddenly you, suddenly you see that there is another place, uh, another place of existence here in this life other than the things that you've been doing and the things that you've been counting on where you get up in the morning and you, you go to a job. Not to say that a job isn't something that, isn't something that, that the Lord would... And not used to provide for you. I mean, a job is good. But when a job consumes your life, when your interests ultimately are such that you get home and, and you just live this routine that it's hard for you to find even 30 minutes or an hour in a day to sit down and open up the Bible and begin to read the Word. Something's wrong with that, you see. When, there's, when the idea of communing with God in, in a place called prayer where you're on your knees and you begin to cry out to, to, to heaven, you begin to cry out for Father's will to be done, is something that really seems to be quite boring and non-interesting. And, you know, my goodness, how do you even do that in the first place? If that is the situation of your life, something's terribly wrong. The reality of it is, is you have not had the encounter that God, the Holy Ghost, has come to give to you to reveal Jesus and make heaven known. Because without the Holy Spirit, Jesus isn't going to be revealed. And heaven's not going to be made known to you. And all the life that you're going to know is the life that you have in this earth. The life that you have in this world. And people who have a life in this world and, and, and they say they know Jesus and, and they, all that. Everybody loves Jesus. Everybody's saved and on their way to heaven. 80% of the people in America are saved and on their way to heaven. It's just nonsense because reality of it is, is God makes a very clear distinction between those who know him and those who don't know him, those who do his will and those who don't do his will. Where, where, there, where there is a continual overflowing of a cry of God where you don't have to be pumped up and you don't have to be once again, you know, um, challenged to reach out and begin to cry, you know, reach out and, and, and touch the presence of the Lord and cry out to him for the things that he's freely willing to give. But people are offline. Just you're doing you're doing the things that pleases you. You're off in a realm. You're off in a realm of doing those things that you feel is most needful for you. Once again, paying the rent is a big deal, isn't it? And everybody said, yes, go ahead. Just go ahead and just say yes. Go ahead and say yes and get real. Paying a mortgage is a big deal, right? Right. Having money uh, for the various things that you need, like food and clothing, is very, very important to you, right? And it's not to God, right? Well, it is important to God. But he said, if you're going after it, you're going to miss out on everything. If that's how you're, you live your life, if that consumes your life, you're missing out on everything. He said, I've got to readjust the way you think. Let me readjust the way you think. Let me turn this thing around. Let me, let me set your heart and your, and, your, and, your, and your purpose and your life and the meaning and the value of your life on the things of the Spirit, on the things of the kingdom, on the things of the reality of where the, the place where I dwell, the realm where I dwell. Father lives and dwells in another realm different from the realm of this earth and the realm of this world. And when I say earth, you know, I'm using it as a synonym for the realm of this world. I don't believe that 99% of God's people get what I'm trying to say to you. And I'm, and I'm, and I'm really just in earnest here this morning about every single person having a revelation that you can step over into a place that's very different than what you've been living in and what you call normal and what you call walking with Jesus or walking in the Spirit. And when you do, ultimately, there is going to be a much pow more powerful impact 
of God upon your life, first and foremost, it's going to touch you in a way to where that you now know how to interact with them and you want to interact with them. Uh, on a whole other dimension. It's not boring. It's not a religious duty. Oh, no. I forgot to do 30 minutes of Bible reading. Pastor's going to be upset. It takes 90 days to read through the Bible, the whole Bible from Genesis 1-1 to Revelation 22-21. And I just am so far behind. Why? Because you don't have a life in the kingdom to begin with. And even if you read the Bible an hour a day, doesn't mean you have a life in the kingdom. It doesn't mean you have a life in the realms of the spirit. It doesn't mean that you are spiritual. It doesn't mean that you have an understanding of interaction with God. People are caught up in their hurts. They're caught up in their wild ideas, in their imaginations, in their religious principles and concepts. Look, walking in the spirit is something that you and I have got to learn how to do. It's extremely important. And 2 Peter puts a huge emphasis on this. Okay, I want you to grab a hold of this. My, I'm telling you, I believe like never before the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, the people who have an understanding and an insight to what Father has purposed us to live in are going to have to get real, real dramatic. They're going to have to get real passionate. They're going to have to get real earnest because everything that you can classify as worldly, everything that you can classify as ungodly, <laughs> has found in some dimension a place in the midst of the church. In verse, 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 10 is where I want to start reading to you. It says, but the, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. And I want you to make sure that you understand this. No one knows when he's coming. We must be mindful. We must be continually watchful. We don't know whether he's coming in the morning, in the noon, in the evening. It doesn't... You know, no one knows. He alone knows. And um, he can come at any time. And there's plenty of verses of Scripture on this. He's not ultimately got to wait till all of your ideas and my ideas and everybody else's ideas of what's got to be fulfilled before he comes. He can come right now. And I want him to come right now. And what will make the difference of really whether he's coming right now, I'm going to prove this to you, whether he's coming right now is how earnest you and I are for him to come. Now, that's a radical thought because yes. I'm going to show you this here in just a second. I'm going to show you the earnestness of our crying out, Father, your kingdom come. Even so could quickly, Lord Jesus, our desire to participate with him, our desire to be a part of that which he has ordained to live for us to live in. I mean, you know, James said that. Father has a, a long patience. He's long suffering, waiting till he sees the fruit of the precious fruit of the earth come forth in his people's life. A, a precious fruit that is a spiritual dimension of the life and ministry of Jesus being revealed in the midst of his people on an individual basis, on a collective basis. We look back through history and we can see moments of time where there was revivals and we define those revivals because all of God's people were overwhelmed with the presence of God and the giftings of the Spirit began to manifest through them a great Holy Ghost conviction, a great crying out of the things of the Spirit through their lives so that what Father wills and what Father wants is actually heard and demonstrated in the life of those who know him. His very own life. I mean, Peter opens up his, this, this epistle, the second epistle, epistle, telling us that we've been called unto glory and virtue. And that we've been given everything that pertains unto life and godliness. And that we've been given the divine nature, the same nature of the living God. People feel like they can occupy a place in church with murder and hate and strife and envy. That's everything that belongs to a world called hell. Everything that belongs to a world called uh, 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 the, 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 the prince and the power of the air. It's everything that belongs to the influences of demon spirits. And yet they find comfort zones in the midst of God's people. People holding on to all, all different types of attitudes and unforgiveness. And, 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 and in this, there is such a distance between them and, an, and a conscious awareness of God. There's no real reverence. There's really no real reverence. You come in, you dust your seat off before you sit down, all this other stuff. No real reverence. Are you listening to me? You, you just walk all over top of the anointing, the moving of God. Just do whatever it is you want to do, whenever it is you want to do it. There's no real reverence because there's no real encounter with God. It, it's going to be your way because there's no real encounter with God. That's got to stop. 
Somehow we've got to get in earnest about the situation that we find ourselves in, which we have fully justified as being okay, because after all, self does those kinds of things. It always, yourself will always spin the things that you're doing to be right and justifiable. That ain't going to work out for you. It isn't going to work out for glorifying the name of Jesus. It's going to be just the same kind of shame that his people put on him in Genesis and Exodus and Leviticus and Numbers and Deuteronomy and First and Second Samuel and First and Second Kings and First and Second Chronicles. I'll tell you, you start getting over and start getting over to the prophets and start listening. I mean, there's going to be a revival with Ezra. Hang on, you know. There's going to be some great encouragement in the prophetic utter utterances of David in the Psalms when he was flowing in the things of the anointing and of the Spirit. When you step over and begin to hear what Isaiah's got to say and what Jeremiah's got to say, things begin to change. Oh, why, don't, why isn't it that God's people are, are unwilling to let their whole life value system be completely changed where they don't any longer seek for those things that are, are designed... Uh, to accommodate our life in this world and designed specifically by Satan, specifically by the prince of the power of the air. The Lord says, take no thought for what you should wear. So quit taking thought because it's going to mess up your way of thinking. It's going to mess up the way that you approach Father. He says, take no thought for what you should eat. Take no thought for your life in this world. Because if you do, you're going to be consumed by it. And it's going to mess up the whole dynamics of your relationship and interaction with them. He says, listen, I'm God. I, God. I own everything. Can you trust me for just a moment? Every place we don't trust God brings us shame and a reproach against his name. If there's anything we want to be able to do is we want to be able to participate in seeing the, the goodness and, 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 the, and the glory and the majesty and the truth and the reality of a living God manifested in our midst. Religion isn't going to do the job. We who come to church basically interested in what songs are going to sing. I'm actually interested in how the power of the Holy Ghost is going to function and flow through you. Because unless you begin to participate with the living God and allow the Holy Ghost to have free course through your life. I mean, the Spirit of the Lord will come forth from your life like the busting of uh, uh, the breaking forth of water. As, a, as it would break forth from a dam or break forth from some place that's been restrained. Uh, it's like the flowing of, of, of rivers in, in the midst of the rainy season. Uh, the Niagara, Victoria Falls, the Zambezi. I mean, it's always a mighty river, but during the rainy season, my goodness, it starts taking over a lot of real estate. It's powerful. It's dis the display of its power is quite amazing. That display of God's power, he wants to be revealed through our lives. And should we step into that, then all that we have need of would be, be, would be supplied to us. Our, the food that we have need of, the finances that we have need of, the, uh, will be better than what we've ever been able to do for ourselves. The, the increase in the manifest presence of God brings a miracle provision of everything that he has. And yet we're stuck down in this place of, of our own need and of our own interest and trying to talk God into changing his ways and accommodating us. And he's saying, no, you change. Come over here. Do what I'm telling you to do. And everything that I promised will be yours. We don't want to do that. It's like, oh, no, you first. Put money in my bank first. Put money in my bank account first. Pay off my house first. No, no, no. God does that. All that's going to happen is you're going to have another thing and another thing and another thing. Look, it's proven. It's proven. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, 1st, 2nd Samuel, 1st, 2nd King, 1st, 2nd Chronicles. It's already proven. It's proven. What makes you any different? The Lord says, look, I am, the Lord shows up on the scene. Christ Jesus, God made manifest in flesh, shows up on the scene and says, I'm going to show you how to live an entirely different life than you've been taught by Adam and all of his descendants up to this point. And people just want to make a patty cake religion out of it. Just show up and sing some kumbaya songs. Huh? And, and then you got to beg people and you got to, you know, Almost take them out to the woodshed and spank them to get them to really start, you know, flowing in praise and shouts of, of adoration that can only come by the Holy Ghost. So, you know what? No amount of spanking or discipline would change anything really, huh? You come back in just that much more grumpy. 
that much more abused. They don't understand. Nobody loves me. I can't believe it. The pressure they put on me. It's just legalistic. Well, it would be legalistic for you to be, have to participate with something that you don't know how to do and you don't want to do. That'd be legalistic. But when you're born of the Spirit, the things of the Holy Ghost, the things of the Spirit fill you. They're supposed to. But there will be, a, you know what? Interest in this world, participation with worldly things will run an interference being consumed by your disappointments and your discouragements, being consumed by the stresses and the pressures that you put on yourself to succeed within the framework of what uh, has been designed by the prince of the power of the air and the culture and the society dictates. All that's going to do is lock you away in a prison and keep you from accessing that which God has for you. Father, take better care of you than you've ever taken care of yourself. You just got to take a risk to find it out. It's risky business. Putting your life on the line like this. Hey, it's risky business. It's risky business. Stepping out and saying, Father, I'm putting you first. You're more important to me than anything else. Well, first of all, you have to be born of the Spirit to even want to do this. And then you're born of the Spirit. That's, what you're go- that's ultimately the immediate reaction of your nature. That's what you're going to want to do. As soon as you're born of the Spirit, that's exactly what you're going to want to do. Yeah. Yeah. And then the preacher's going to come along and say, no, you don't need to do that. And then you get, you know, you get wrong influences and your faith gets subverted and perverted. And now you're off charting another course that is clearly revealed to be opposite of that which God says in his word and yet because self will always spend things in its own interest you'll justify your state and you right and everybody else is wrong and won't be long and you'll be wondering why people aren't bowing down and giving you more reverence when you walk by and it won't be long that you'll ultimately accuse God and then it won't be long that you won't only just be accusing God and blaming him for everything that's going down that's not good but you'll ultimately hate him and say that his ways are unjust Because that's where all sin ends. God's got to have a people in the earth to know him. God's got to have a people in the earth who will flow and function with him. And this is what it's all about. This is what Father's waiting for. This is what the Lord is looking for. And he's saying, listen, I'm coming as a thief in the night. No thief thief has ever called you up and said, hey, look, I'm going to come break into your house. Okay? And and they, they, they they don't get there and say, you know, hey, blow the horn, man. Let everybody, wake up everybody in there just so that they can understand what we're going to do. And then get on the loudspeaker. Hey, we're about to bust your door down. We're going to break through the window in the, in the back room. And we're going to steal everything you got. He's coming as a thief in the night. He's coming when no one expects him to come. He's coming at a time that men will not expect him to come. The only people that are going to participate in his coming are those who are ready, who are watching, who are looking for him to come, who are crying out, your your kingdom come, Lord. We ask you to take your power, come reign. And, And that becomes something that is a reality to you because the Holy Spirit himself made it a reality. Because you were born of the Spirit. And then you were willing to participate with what the Holy Ghost is doing every day. Um, the, the Holy Spirit is the one who gives us this life of God. Without, if we don't participate with Him, we don't function in the life of God. The more we participate with Him, the more we function in the life of God, the more we walk in divine health, the more we walk in divine blessings, the more we walk in divine provision, and the more we walk in divine protection. And I'm telling you, when you have His provision, you don't need yours. There's three thank you, Jesus, and two noddings of the head. And that's the state of the church. Because we don't even know that. We don't even know that realm. Why? Because that's not rational. That's not logical. God says, I want you to cast down the rational and the logical if you want to walk with me. That's the 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4. He said, bring into captivity every imagination. That word imagination in the Greek language means that which is rational and that which is logical. Because what happens is that which is rational and that which is logical has been dictated to us by a world system designed by the prince of the power of the air to keep us blinded from knowing how to walk it out with God. He says, I'm a miracle God. I want to do miracle things. 
things for, for you. I want to fill you up with faith that causes you to quench the violence of fire, to escape the edge of the sword, to stop the mouths of lion, to walk on the water. I mean, the, the, every impossible thing becomes a normal and common occurrence to those people who are willing to take a hold of walking in the Spirit and living this miracle life with God. Nobody wants to do it. It's too risky. It's not logical. It's not rational. You're out of your mind, man. So the Lord says, take no thought for what you shall eat, what you shall wear. All these the nations seek, all these things the nations seek after. It has perverted them. There is no place for father's interest and for father's faith realm to find a, a establishment in your life, much less a maturation. And so somebody's going to say, you know what, I'm done with the world. I'm done with rational, logical. I'm done with being defined in a caste system created not by some administration in America or the UK, but designed by the prince of the power of the air, the spiritual wickedness, the very power of Satan himself, and every day people slave for him. And the, no wonder they, they need to go get drunk and salvate their brain with ethanol. No wonder they need to go do drugs and, and go and, 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 and hurt one another and kill one another. Look at the abuse they're living under. Jesus came to deliver us out of that mess. Anybody who wants to be free from that mess, anybody who wants to be free from that mess, Jesus allows us to be free. He makes a way where we can clean escape. We get to come over here and live in the love and the joy and the peace and the goodness. And we, we're going to have to recognize this, and it's time for us to stop being little, you know, you know, little babies in the spirit. What is a baby in the spirit not willing to fully cooperate with God? That's what a baby in the spirit is. It has nothing to do with how long you've known the Lord. It has nothing to do with how intellectual you are or how much you love Jesus. Man, I'm telling you, how many people tell me they love Jesus while they're committing adultery? How, they, how much they love Jesus while they're living in strife and envy. How much they love Jesus while they live in rebellion. Jesus said, if you love me, you obey me. And so I, you could say you love him all you want. I'm going to say if you love him, you obey him. And obedience is not subjective. It's very clearly defined. It's not going to be, it's, you can't spin it to accommodate whatever it is that you believe about yourself that no one else can see. Should I say that one again? Because Father's made us a witness of his kingdom, of his life, of his glory, of his majesty, of his power, of his goodness, of, of, of his abundant life, his life, unending life, immeasurable life, an immeasurable degree of joy, an immeasurable degree of love. Yes. An immeasurable degree of lowliness and hum humility. Humility and lowliness are, are two of the most beautiful things that exist in God's universe and is to the, the two most despised things in this world. And without it, you aren't ever going to be able to fully receive from the Holy Ghost. And until you're willing to step out and really entrust your whole life to God, you're never even going to begin to yield to that realm of his lowliness and meekness. Because it's not something that people train themselves to do. It's that which God the Holy Ghost gives us the ability to function in. It's a whole nother realm. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's the realm of the miracle. It's the realm of the signs and wonders. It's the realm of faith. It's the realm of the provision. It's the realm of divine ability. <laughs> it's the realm to be able to stand against 10,000 and, and put them to flight. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a realm that, that does quench the violence of fire. In other words, the flame can't kindle on you. See, the flame, all the fire does is obey the commands of God, the laws of God. It don't function outside the laws of God. It burns what God has told it to burn. And that's when you, that's because, and therefore when you walk with God, <laughs> you're not going to burn. And uh, <laughs> that's why the three Hebrew children didn't burn when they threw them in the fire furnace because the flame couldn't kindle upon them. God said, no, you can't burn them. They don't, they're not to be burnt. And you can step over into a place, you can step over into a place of living in God, in Christ Jesus. Where you can begin to participate with being a witness of his kingdom. Being so full of the Holy Ghost that once again signs, wonders, and miracles will begin to be manifested through your life. But more than that, a fellowship with him will be made manifest in your face, in your speech. 
in your conduct, in your praise, hallelujah, in your prayers, hallelujah. Well, I'm trying to get over here, get this, get this job done here. But the day of the Lord will come as the thief in the night in which the heavens shall pass away with great noise. And the elements shall melt with a fervent heat. And the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. It just reminds me real quickly. Just look with me in Isaiah. I have a hard time doing short sermons. But look with me in Isaiah chapter, chapter 34. Just want you to help. I want to help you understand something quickly. Or at least... Conceptualize it a little bit. Verse 4. In Isaiah's prophesying, he says, And all the host of heavens shall be dissolved. See, Satan is going to be cast out of heaven. The principalities and powers of wickedness that are right now exercising their dominion and influence over the minds and lives of men, deceiving them, holding them in the bondage of their lies, all the way. From the, all the way from the intellectual palaces of the world to, to the, the worst prisons of the world. Yeah, everything in between. He says, And all the hosts of heaven shall be dissolved, and the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll, and all their hosts shall fall down. <laughs> Every demon spirit, there'll be no more place found in heaven, in the unseen realm, in the place of authority over men. And over governments and over society for Satan. He's going to be cast out of heaven. We see it in Revelation chapter 12. That's what Isaiah is talking about. That's in part what Peter's referring to here in verse 10. He says in verse 11, Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of person should you be in all holy lifestyle and godliness? If you really believe this, if you're investing in the world, if you're investing in your life in this world, I'm telling you, that is a very unwise investment. That investment's going nowhere. That investment's going to be burned up. It's a certain day of collapse. It's defined. But how about if you invest in the life that God has? He's going to wipe this thing clean, man. He's going to wipe it clean. He's going to do a better job than he did in the days of Noah. He's going to wipe wickedness clean, I'm telling you. And that's why Peter says, man, are you what? Knowing that this is going to happen, what kind of holy fear should be in your life? What kind of conduct should be in your life? What kind of, a, of attention to the call of God and the purposes of God should we give every, every, every minute of the day? Well, you can't until you've had an encounter with God. You can't until you've been first born in the Spirit. And then have an encounter with Him. And then begin to participate with Him. I'm going to go on because I'm getting ahead of myself here what I'm getting ready to say. Verse 12. Looking and speeding up. Literally, looking to and hastening. There is no manuscript anywhere in the Greek language that says or makes it, implies that, that we're looking to and running towards. It's literally looking and speeding up or hastening the coming of the Lord. How is it that you and I get to hasten the coming of the Lord? How is it that we speed this thing up? How is it that we participate with him so that it's sped up so that that which he wants to accomplish in creating a new heaven and a new earth can just happen that much quicker? That's really what's being said. Father's got, in James chapter 5 and verse 7, the Lord says he has, long, he's, he has a lot of patience. He's waiting for something to come forth from his people. From those that are called by his name and born of his spirit. He's waiting for a precious fruit to come forth. And he describes it. James describes it as a fruit that comes forth. After having received the early and the latter rain. And we know what that fruit is. Jesus described the fruit. He said this is what you're called to be. He said, he said you're called to live and to will and abide in me in such a way. That whatever you ask I will do it. The one measure for me is. If there's anything I'm asking father. 
You know, I was asking Father this morning about some things and say, said, Father, why haven't you done that yet? And, you know, I have many opportunities to uh, pray for certain miracles that didn't take place. And I said, I've asked Father, why didn't it happen? And he's every, every time Father has made me know I need to participate more with the Holy Ghost. I'm still minding my own life and doing my own thing way too much. I, I need to understand why Paul gave himself saying, I pray in the Spirit more than you all. I pray in the heavenly language more than you all. I'm giving myself over to a totally, uh, completely different realm. He talked about living in the Spirit and walking in the Spirit. <laughs> and being led by the Spirit. And that what, it, what that would result in a different kind of a lifestyle. You wouldn't think the same way. You'd rather have the mind of Christ. You wouldn't have the same emotions and the same uh, feelings. Because now you're living under holy emotions. There would be no place for you to make provision for the lust of the flesh to fulfill it. There would be no place for you to carry unforgiveness and hurt in your life because a river of love and mercy, a river of love and mercy and forgiveness would be continually flowing, washing all that way away, releasing everybody, blessing everybody. Because see, that's just the life of the Holy Ghost. That's just the life of Jesus. That's just the life of heaven. That's just the life of God. Doesn't walk around burdened down with and overwhelmed with the affairs of this life and, 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 and whose countenance is less than shining. Whose countenance, rather, is filled with the perplexity and the stress and the confusion and the worries and the concerns and the hurts and the unforgiveness and the bitterness and all the rest of the stuff that belongs to a demon-ruled world. Everybody that lives under the rulership of Satan lives under strife and envy and rebellion and hurts and wounds and unforgiveness and all this other stuff. Everybody who's now been, doesn't want to live under that realm anymore can call upon the name of the Lord. He'd come and save you and bring you over here into a realm where just the opposite. Now you're living under his love and his joy and his peace and his unity and his servitude and his humility. And everything's good. And everybody who loves him, everybody who loves his word, don't tell me about what you do, how much you love his word. Everyone who loves his word, nothing offends them. That's what he says. I'm going with what he says. I'm not going with what you're going to spend in your own self-interest to make, make yourself look good. You know, what we need to do is humble ourselves, fall down, and repent. People, the pride of life is the most subtle of all iniquity, and it's just as bad as the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eye. The pride of life is just as bad. It's just as bad. It's just as bad. And it's going to keep you from dealing with reality. And the, the rea here it is. <laughs> In dealing with the Holy Spirit, it is only dealing with reality because he's the spirit of truth. And he's not going to mix it up with a lie and he's not going to mix it up with something that's not true. Somebody said, where do I find truth? The word of God. That's where I find truth. What does the Lord tell me to do? He tells me, pray in the Spirit till I take hold of heaven. But we don't do it. We just pray enough to make our religious obligations, or think we met our religious obligation. Huh? And religious obligation is something that is dictated by man, whatever denomination you part of. But that's not what God said. God's called us to pray in the Holy Ghost till we touch heaven. He's called us to be filled with the Spirit. That's how I'm hastening. That's how I'm hastening. That's how I'm speeding it up. I'm going to go ahead and participate with the Holy Ghost, the gifts of the Spirit. The church don't want the gifts of the Spirit. They want different things, that, the ideas. But when we talk about the power and the fire and the glory and, and, and the mantle of heaven, that is a different dimension. That flows out of an intimacy and a personal relationship that is ultimately something you have right there in secret where no one else is looking. And, all, and it grows and it matures to become an explosive demonstration of the goodness and the power of God outside 
in the meeting place, in the workplace, in every place. I mean, it's a big thing. It's a wonderful thing when all of a sudden your work doesn't get in place, get in, get, get in, in way of, of, of Jesus being revealed to your life. Your work doesn't run interference with you being in the church place. Your workplace doesn't run interference with you being in the church place. Something goes on in the church that can't go on anywhere else. There's a gathering together, a gathering unto God that is supposed to take place in the sense where we, every one of us as members in the body of Christ are so submitted to and hooked up with His glory, so under the authority of heaven that the beauty and the splendor of God can be revealed that would break off the mind-blinding spirits and the deceptions that hold people in the place of bondage where they can't see or know anything different than the things that they've been taught by this world. I, I just encourage you to go ahead and participate with speeding up this whole program. The Lord said, I give you a way to redeem the times. I know the day is evil. I know there's darkness over, over the land, gross darkness over the people. When are you going to start praying with all this prayer? Um, prayer and supplication in the Spirit? When are you going to start being filled with the Spirit, speaking yourself in songs and hymns and spirits of songs? Huh? When are you going to start living out this life of endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace? When are you going to start participating with that which I described when I said, I'll endue you with power from on high, and out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water, and I'll cause my glory to be upon you in the midst of the church? Listen, the Pentecostal movement, I, listen, I am my rich in the Pentecostal movement. It, the Pentecostal movement is all but gone. It's all but gone. And there's nothing, what's going on in the Pentecostal movement? It looks nothing like it looked when I was five years old, six years old. And you can go back and you can get, I was listening to Clara Grace last night. And Jeannie Wilkerson and some of the older women of God come out of the Pentecostal movement. Who were old, when, 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 I think when Clara Grace did the... Um, the, the recording that I listened to last night, I think it was in 1967, and she had been ministering, I think, for about 50 years at that time. So you know where she came from. Huh? She described to you what the Pentecostal movement looks like. Now we just in a, we're, just in, we're just in something. We're just in something. I think we're in something that looks like, hopefully, here, the people that's got a stirring that want, really want to take a hold of God and want to have His life and want to have heaven now. And want to do whatever it takes, willing to go where, go to whatever lengths is necessary in obedience to God, to see His glory, His power, His coming, His majesty, the reality of who He is, the reality of His person. I'm telling you, I, I, I can understand why most of the world believes that there's nothing to religion. Because basically what the church has been able to, to demonstrate has been a very small token of the reality of who God is and what His purpose for the church to be and look like. We're supposed to be of all the nations of the earth. We're supposed to be a, like a bright shining light, a city set up on the hill that cannot be hid. God doesn't light uh, a light to hide it under a, uh, the bed. He lights a light to set it up in the highest place so that all men can see. And is it going to happen with you and I attending our own business all day long, every day? And it's going to happen with us seeking our own way, living our own life, asking God, Oh, Lord, bless me. Bless me while I live out my own life. Bless me while I do my own thing. Watch out. Jeremiah is really clear on that. Jeremiah chapter 17, beginning of verse 4, is real clear on all of that. Huh? You come home thrashed and tired. Hey, listen, what happens if you went to work and all day long you are filled with the Spirit? And all day long you shone as a bright light. And all day long you lived in the same kind of wisdom that Joseph lived in in the prison that got him promoted to the highest position of all the land to where that what he believed and what he knew began to affect all humanity on the earth. What if you all of a sudden had a job like you started living like that? Oh, no, you're going to have to have an encounter with God to live like that. You're going to have to do that. You're going to have to sort some stuff out that you've been hiding and sneaking around with. It's true, people. It's true. Because we want everybody to, we want everybody to just like, you know, agree with it. How wonderful we are. I'm going to tell you right now. I'm going to tell you how wonderful Jesus is. Hey. I'm going to tell you, <laughs> I'm going to tell you how wonderful the things of the kingdom are. 
And, and the Lord has invited you and I in, and there's certain things that can't come in because I'm standing at the door. And, I, and I'm looking at what you're bringing in. I'm going, hey, you can't have that. You can't bring that in here. And then you look back at me and going, who do you think you are? Telling me I can't bring that in here. Who are you? We live in, a, we live in an age right now. They don't want to be corrected. Everybody's a king in their own eyes. Didn't she realize that? We're all a king of our own castle. And if you're not a king, you're a queen ruling over your king. Are you with me? God help us. It's all rebellion. It's all perverseness. It's all iniquity. And we're going to have to say, wait a minute. Lord, help me, help me to get... Help me to understand this new kind of living. Open up my eyes so that I might see. My ears that I might hear. My heart that I might understand. That there is another realm to live in. Because Israel, they were smart guys. They didn't get it. There were brilliant people in Israel. They didn't get it. A couple of people had encounters with God and went all the way. Everybody had some sort of an encounter with God. And most of them didn't want it. They wanted to do their own thing. They wanted to have it their own way. How about today if you started saying, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to participate with speeding up the coming of the Lord. I'm going to participate, in other words, with speeding up this thing getting completely wiped out. Wiped out. I'm, t I'm talking about completely erased, burned up with the fire of God's glory and presence and, there, and the earth being filled only with his righteousness and goodness where I'm crying, oh, God, gird your sword upon your side and come ride prosperously. Actually, those words have been used in almost every great revival that has ever taken place on the planet, and especially in modern days. Crying out for God to come rule and reign. And that begins with each of us individually saying, God, come rule, reign over me. Yeah. <laughs> huh? Well, that means you don't get to make your own decisions anymore. You say, okay, now, Lord, what am I supposed to do next? Holy Spirit, lead me. Guide me. Show me. Okay. And it begin, it's going to begin, it's really going to begin with your conduct. And I want to show you this. Because if you look down here, uh, you know, first of all, we said, what kind of manner of lifestyle should you have in all, in all, in all um, holiness and godliness? But then when we move on down here into verse 14... We find out that we're supposed to be living in such a way that we be found in, we're found in him in peace without any spot or without any blemish. In other words, we're, not, we're, we're in hastening the coming of the Lord because we're saying, Lord, we only want to live in a realm called righteousness. We only want to live in a realm called holiness. We only want to live in the realm of your life. We want to live in the realm of everything that belongs to you. Because when you, if you want to define joy, can I define joy and love and peace and every good thing for you? It is defined in the context of holiness. What is, how is holiness defined? It's defined only in the context of being in the presence of the living God. So the Lord says, he, he says, take your shoes from off your feet. You're standing on holy ground. He was standing on holy ground because he was in the presence of the holy God. And, and in, that, in, his, in his presence is fullness of joy at his right hand are pleasures forevermore. So what you've got to be willing to do is you've got to be willing to say, Lord, strengthen me in my soul so that I only love you. Strengthen me in my soul so I only desire holy emotions. Strengthen me in my soul so I only want the pleasures that are at your right hand. Lord, strengthen me in my spirit so that I can stand against sin and iniquity of every sort and every kind because different people have different flavors that they like. Some people are sipping on their pink um, uh, flavor of sin and other people are sipping on their purple flavor of sin. And the people sipping on their pink flavor of sin in the church or telling the people over there sipping on their purple flavor of sin how terrible they are. I read an article last night where the people were trying to make a case that gays, lesbians, bisexuals, and transvestites are the people that are going to usher in the kingdom of God. Oh yeah, no problem. They're the eunuchs of the Bible. Oh yeah. And they're sipping on their, their purple and you're sipping on your pink going, oh Father. Oh, God, you need, to get, you need to hit the ground. You need to get in the presence of God. And when I say hit the ground, you need to hit your face. You need to get in the presence of God. Find out how much self-interest you're hanging on to, how much of your life you're pursuing, how many things that you've got going on inside of your thinking and inside of your heart huh, that you're participating with that are literally an abomination to the Lord. Hey, come on now. Because I'm talking about, I'm just a revival language. There has to be a revival. There's very little similitude. Pentecost is no longer in Pentecostal churches by and large. There has, there's got to be a revival. Revival begins with renouncing the world and getting the worldliness out. And first and foremost, you've got to be able to identify what that is. 
The church should be a place where everything about it is first and foremost is passionate love for Jesus in every song and every prayer. And it's hard to even it's hard to even sing over top of your praying. It's hard to even sing over top of you're flowing in the Holy Ghost with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. Hardly hard to sing over it. Please, let me, give me an opportunity. Please, let me just have a little taste of that again. Where one or two people have a great anointing in their life in the meeting and that's it. And everybody else just getting rain off their roof. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? They're just getting blessed by being around a couple of people that touched heaven. And everybody else said, wow, I'm going to go to the meeting so we can be around a couple of people that touched heaven because, boy, it's really good. No, 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 no. Father wants everybody to step into this realm and have a place in Father, a place in the anointing where you carry this around. You tabernacle in this glory because all you live for is heaven. All you live for is his, his manifest presence. All you live for is this fellowship. <laughs> Woo! All you live for is the breaking forth of the presence of God through your life, like the breaking forth of water. Hallelujah. Ha, ha. I'm telling you, man, when you're around the breaking forth of water, you're going to get wet. You're going to get wet. You're going to get wet. It's soggy. At least. At best, and what it's supposed to be is supposed to sweep you away and take you under. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord Jesus. An encounter with God brings all the reverence. An encounter with God brings all the respect. An encounter with God causes you to understand how to function and flow in the Holy Ghost conviction. Encounter with God shows you how to pray. Encounter with God shows you how to receive from heaven. An encounter with God shows you how, how to function and move in all these ways of Jesus. This fruit the Father is looking for. It gives you an access into the, to the realms of His presence so that whatever you ask, Father will do it. This is the fruit He's looking for. This is the fruit we should be looking for. If I could just get you to leave out of here to say today saying, I am going to participate with the hastening. You can't rule your own house. You ain't rule under reigning with Jesus. Give me a break. You don't want to offend anybody? I don't offend anybody. Just let them, just, you, you really shouldn't be doing that. That ain't going to be going down like that. I mean, the Lord Jesus is going to come and rule with a rod of iron. I'm very happy about that. Huh? Oh, I can't believe, I can't believe how, how controlling, how insistent. Just get ready, because I'm telling you, he's going to come and smash everything. He's going to smash it. As a potter smashes a marred vessel. And then he's going to, after he smashes it, he's going to stomp it to dust. Just like Moses did with the, with the idol that Aaron had made. He not only, it not only got crushed, Moses did a dance on the thing, man. He got after it. He smashed it to find us. That's the, what Jesus is going to do with all the stuff that you allow in your life right now. Huh? Hallelujah. That isn't the Holy Ghost. That isn't the things of the Spirit. If it's not the things of the Spirit, I'm telling you right now, it's the wrong investment of your life. It's going to only result in problems and issues. It's only going to cause you to be driven further from His presence, not bring you deeper into His, his, deep, deeper into his glory. You're going to have to be willing to identify these things because Father is calling the people to come out from among them, be separate, and touch not the unclean thing so He can show Himself to be God in the midst of a people. Come on now. Huh? Come on now. There, I, you know, if, if you were to stand at the judgment seat of Christ right now, how many of you would be seen to have taken the giftings that God had given you and let them lay dormant? You never really stirred them up. You didn't give yourself to them as you gave yourself to the study of your vocation or the study of your, you know, academic subjects or the study of your athletic endeavors or whatever. Hmm? Be, we're going to have to try 
to just get honest for just a little while here. We're going to have to demand a change. I, I believe with all of my heart that Father's going to come with the fire of his judgment in the midst of his church. And the Father's going to clean the place up. I really believe that the church ought to be a place where people fear to join themselves unto it. <laughs> and that's novel. <laughs> now that we've come to a place where, where we've come to a place where, you know, numbers, numbers of people, size of the offering is bigger than the manifest glory of heaven. I mean, I could just go through the long list. Jesus, help us. All the time we could be enjoying the majesty, the glory, stepping in to a realm that nobody, nobody in this room really, truly knows the dimensions of it. No one in this room, including myself, we've only just very, just tasted it. We just tasted a little bit. We've scratched the surface of all the dimensions of heaven. What happens is we continually draw back because we're taking care of our own interests, ourselves. Father brings us up to a place where we're challenged and we choose to go with ourself rather than going his way. He brings us up to a point where somebody's persecuting us and we choose to curse and get upset and be mad instead of blessing. Those kinds of things. All of a sudden we encounter some opportunity or occasion for some pleasure, some cheap pleasure in this world. And really, Father is standing there, and his eyes are beholding, and he's saying to us and looking at us, wondering, will we choose his pleasures by refusing those pleasures that are an abomination to him, those things that are anti-Christ, contrary to the Holy Spirit? And we constantly are choosing things of this world, you see? Constantly befriending the world interacting with the world. We say, well, I'm not a friend with it. I just interact with it. Well, same thing. I'm not a friend with it. I just like to do what it's doing. <laughs> same thing. Let me break this down for you. And he says, it's an, what does Father say? He says, it's an act of hostility against me. I don't know that we've ever really dealt with this. I, we preach it. We cry out. We, we proclaim these things. Yet it seems to not really truly be heard the offense that the world system is to God because the world system is designed by the prince of the power of the air, the re rebel against God, spiritual wickedness. How can we begin to understand this sin truly is treason, that covenant breaking is treachery? How do we begin to understand that? How do we begin to understand how hideous rebellion is? Rebellion and stubbornness, which finds its place continually in the church. God says it says witchcraft. Huh? Think about it. In other words, he says it's the same craft that Satan is himself doing. Oh, but we love Jesus. Oh. Well, why don't you start honoring him now? See, you love him so much. Why don't you start bringing glory to his name? See, you love him so much. Why don't you understand it's not even possible unless you obey the word and then give yourself in obedience to the word over to the Holy Ghost so he can do this thing through you. Because you holding on to your own life is only going to bring a shame and a reproach and a mark. Read it. Read it, Genesis. Are you with me? Praise God for his mercy and his movings in the midst of all that mess. You're going, how did people get, Lord, is this the best you got to work with? Huh? Because I'm, I'm, I, I, sometimes I'm like, okay. It's a heartbreak for me to read Judges. Oh, oh. It's a heartbreak. And it should be. And it should bring within me and within you a resolve not to be the same way. Not to participate the same way. Not to do the same things. To say, wait a minute. Wait a minute, I'm going to step up here. Wait a minute. I'm going to step up and lay down my life. Wait a minute. I'm going to step up and participate with his glorious church. Wait a minute. I'm going to step up and I'm going to participate with learning how to live and walk. Live in the spirit. To, that is an action of your will. To live. To learn to live. To live by and live in. To exist, in other words. To breathe in and out by the Holy Ghost. To, to, to have 
a, a governor over your life that keeps your heart and your mind where you don't allow yourself to go over into all those things that people allow themselves to go over into, whatever it might be. Sorrow, sadness, grumpiness, madness. <laughs> Hatred and strife and hurt and pain and unforgiveness and fighting and fussing. I mean, you know, think about it, dear people. If you've been in your house and you've been yelling at one another, how then do you come and praise and bless him? Because he said, you can't do that. He said, you, because he see, you just say, well, we were just having an argument or a disagreement because you just spin it, right? Well, God says you're cursing one another. That's what God says. And it's not the Holy Ghost, you see. He says you're cursing one another. He says, how can you get bitter and sweet water from the same fountain? He's telling us, you can't. So then we have to choose. I'm not having bitter fat water no more. I'm not going to participate with those things that press against my being, against my life, against my soul, against my spirit. I want to change, man. I want a radical change. I want to learn how to do this. God, nobody can do this in their own strength, in their own human ability. No man, no one. we got to fall down on our knees again and again and, and, not, and not stop falling down on our knees until we get it right. Just fall down again and say, Lord, I blew it again. Change me. Help me. Erase this thing. Don't let it govern my life. Don't let it rule over me anymore. Teach me, oh God, to yield my spirit only to the Holy Spirit. To thus, thus live in the Spirit. To walk in the Spirit. To be led by the Spirit. People have just made that fit whatever lifestyle they are living and saying that they're doing it. Nonsense. No more. That's never going to get you into the truth. You're never going to go anywhere with God lying to yourself. Because he's not going to participate with the lie. Father's made it easy. He really has. He's made it easy, but... It is a it is a act. It is a determined act of your will every minute of the day to say, I'm not gonna come under the influences of the spirit of this age and of this world. I want to live in the kingdom of God. It, I'm gonna tell you right now, it's just like with people that have a problem with pornography. If I could get you to live one year, one year refusing it. You'd never have a problem with it again. One year refusing it by the Spirit, saying to the, saying to the Lord, Lord, I want to live in your righteousness. I want to live in your purity. I want to live in your holiness. If I could get them just one year to be transparent and go shout it out, stand up, hey, I blew it again, man, I'm back into the mess. Because it is a shame. And everybody who does it knows it's a shame. Huh? But one day it's going to be shouted from the rooftops. And I'm praying and asking God to shout it now. I just like the Lord come in with an audible voice. This is what you've been doing. And over there, this is what you've been doing. I mean, why is it that people don't want the floodlight of heaven to shine upon their soul and let everything be made known and everything revealed? Why is it that we're not willing right now to say, Holy Ghost, take all my life and put it right there on a video and shine it on the on, on the screen right there so we can all examine and look at the things that's coming out of Pastor Mark's mouth. I'm ready. Do it, Lord. That we can see the things his heart is choosing. What, how is he interacting with Pastor Ann? What does that look like? Do we have an example somewhere? Is there somebody who has more than just a good act going on? Does somebody got some truth and some reality in their life? Come on now. Come on, somebody's going to have to get valiant because I didn't find very, very few in Genesis and Exodus and Numbers and Deuteronomy and First and Second Samuel and First and Second Kings and First and Second Chronicles. I didn't find many valiant. Come on now. How about we participate with hastening, hastening, hastening the day where everything is going to be dissolved. We don't want none of it. Hastening the day when only righteousness is going to be here. That's all we desire. Hastening the day where everything is just Father's way and no other way. Hastening it. Speeding it up. How? How? By participating. Let me say this to you. One of the most important things to the Father is the manifestation of the Holy Ghost on the level of it being expressed like rivers busting out of you. It's, Jesus highlights it. 
It's the highlight of the church. It's the highlight of the New Testament. The gifts of the Spirit, signs and wonders and miracles, a demonstration of the power and the beauty of His presence. Prophecy, where the utterances of God are constantly coming forth, where you literally can learn to speak and live by prophecy. What comes out of your mouth is prophecy. You're going to have to stop all the hate talk. You know what I'm saying? All the curse talk, huh? All, all the strife talk, all, all the backbiting, all that other stuff. That t- talk's got to stop before this other talk can start because you can't get bit, bitter and sweet water out of the same fountain. You've got to make up your mind. I'm not having bitter water no more. And when it comes out, it's as foul to you as it is to God. Huh? And then you just fall down and you repent and you say, Father, forgive me. And he sees the heart of true repentance. He sees the person who doesn't want it anymore. One year, one year, one year living with the Holy Ghost. One year. In this kind of way, change your whole life. That's why he says, look at the kind of godliness. Look at the kind of holiness you have. You should, understanding this thing, don't you realize you, you need to be in the kind of relationship with the Lord where there is no condemnation. That's the peace. There is no guilt. There is no of wrongdoing. You, you have no spot. Huh? There's no blemish. I mean, it's a perfect, acceptable sacrifice to God. In other words, there isn't much transition between here and heaven. There's not really any lifestyle changes going on between here and heaven. I want you to ask the Lord to cause his prayer to come forth from your, from your lips. I want, you to, I want you to begin to participate with the Lord and, and just get real honest with him and say, Lord, I, I understand that you gave us something to redeem the times because the days are evil. I understand that there is a great need for the baptism of the Holy Ghost and fire. I understand that I need to be continually filled with the Spirit and that it isn't something that is... <laughs> look, it isn't... Uh, individual expressions unique from everybody else that you're going to have. It's not. Because this, I, the, I've, I've been allowed of the Lord to, to watch the response to the Inuit, of the Inuit children in the, it, it, up in the Arctic. The Inuit children responding to the Holy Ghost was the same as the children in the outback of Australia in the way they responded. There's no difference. No difference. Baptism in the Holy Ghost and fire looks today just like it did in Acts chapter 2, verse 4. No difference. The people who've been touched by the fire of God and have been touched by the presence of His glory, they have the same results in their life as you read about in the Bible. Same results. Father said, I tell you, as surely as I live, this whole earth will be filled with my glory. The prophet said, I'm telling you, this whole earth will be filled with the glory of the Lord as the water covers the sea. And the Lord began it as the waters of his spirit began to flow out of you and me and flow into this great and mighty ocean of his love to cover the whole earth as the water covers the sea. But if you're going to speed it up and hasten it, you're going to have to participate with it. It's going to have to become a part of your life. You're going to have to quit living the, the, the alter ego that you have, that you call Christianity. Get over here into the realms of the Holy Ghost. If it doesn't produce a moving of the Spirit, you shouldn't participate with it. Huh? If it doesn't drive people to their knees and cause them to pant out, if just an intellectual stimulus, forget about it. What is good is that? That's nonsense. That's nothing. Come on, people. I pray in Jesus' name you can hear me. I, I pray you can feel me. I pray, that, I pray that you can come to understand that you're either glorifying him or bringing shame to his name. And the only way that you can glorify him is to participate with the Holy Ghost because that's what he does. Jesus said, he shall glorify me. Do you know the first person that the Lord re- revealed and introduced in, in among what we call the Godhead or the power of God? It was the Holy Spirit. In Genesis chapter 1, the Spirit of the Lord moved upon the face of the earth. He moved over the chaos, the Holy Ghost. Did you know one of the last things that the Bible says when you hit Revelation chapter 22? He says, the Spirit says, come. That's what he says. The Holy Ghost is saying, come. Jesus is saying, come. He's saying, everybody who's, who has uh, taken a drink of this water also is saying, come. Because huh? if you drink, a river is going to flow out. Can you come to church and not have a river? 
And, and what are you going to define the river? I'm not going to define the river to be anything other than what was coming out of Jesus' life and what was coming out of Paul's life and what was coming out of the 120 on the day of Pentecost. That's what I'm going to define the river to be. I'm going to define the river to be what God said it should be. Prophecy. He said, my spirit shall come upon all flesh and you shall prophesy. And then I'm just, you know, getting, you know, getting stuck between songs. Mm. There is a great... There is a great force of darkness. There is a great principality and power of wickedness that's doing everything right now to stop any moving or advancement of revival in America. There's a great force of hell standing up against any manifestation of the, of the Spirit. And there's too many people participating with that all in the name of Jesus. Oh, we're not going to have no speaking in tongues around here. Uh, and they're not going to have prophecy either. Because you're going to grieve and quench the spirit as soon as you do that. Oh, we're not going to have speaking in tongues around here. You're not going to have any miracles either. Because you grieved and quenched the same spirit that brought the miracles. Oh, we're not going to have speaking in tongues around here. Oh, you're not going to have healings either. And this is the truth. You can see it everywhere. But well, then people standing around wonder why we can't have the move of God. Because you don't want the move of God. The move of God comes, baptism, Holy Ghost, and fire, and the master get us to be at the Comes out with a forcefulness that then ultimately matures and grows and excels into every other manifestation who ha hallelujah the fullest God and the church the church the church us we the people here right now should be so baptized in this glory that love permeates every part of our being and here now choosing to live and dwell and abide in this love no matter what's going on there all of a sudden we begin to experience the fullness of God we just don't allow anything else but love it doesn't matter what anybody does it doesn't matter what any, what happens you just so full of the love of God. Hallelujah. Why? Because you're living by the Spirit. You're walking in the Spirit. You're led by the Spirit. You are the sons and children of the living God. You're the sons and the daughters of the Almighty. Being prepared to rule and reign with them, participating in the speeding up of the whole event. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And Jesus breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Ghost. So they said, well, you're not Jesus. But I'm standing in his stead, and he's living right here and abiding on the inside of me. And he's inspiring me to do exactly what he did. And I'm going to get the same results he got if I'm under his inspiration. That's just the way it goes down. That's the way it works. Hallelujah. Ha, ha. Mangeshe. 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 I'm going to tell you right now in the name of Jesus Christ I prophesy over you. You're going to become praying for people, continually being filled with the Spirit. Continually. Adjay, you need a drink. You need a drink. You start getting a little spiritually thirsty. All you do is speak to the rock and Christ Jesus, and the water comes out, the Holy Ghost. You take a drink, and a busting forth of, of heaven begins to be expressed through your life on, a, on, on an unlimited level. Like it was, and the only way to describe it is like rivers coming out of you, man. The breaking forth of a great water. <laughs> It's more than a flash flood. But we'll just start with a flash flood. In Jesus' mighty name, we've got a continual flash floods going down in your life. Every mind-blinding spirit, every power of hell in Jesus' name, I break your influence. Every realm of lies, every power of unforgiveness, in Jesus' name, I set you free from the power of the influence of it. Now, ha ha, mondo reseo, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Not to be entangled with the cares of this life anymore. Get your jobs on the altar. Hallelujah. If you're, going, if you're going to the grindstone, going round and round, grinding meal for the Philistines, hair cut off, eyes plucked out, get another job. Quit that one. <laughs> get promoted. Get your sight back. Let your hair grow back. Get your anointing back. Go into a mission field with a job. Go do something where you can go and shine as a light to a dark world where it's not about the paycheck. Because Father's doing something far more in the realms of provision. People sit around wringing their hands about provision. 
As long as, long as you do that, faith isn't going to work. You're the hinderer of faith. You're supposed to be the hinderer of doubt. And you're the hinderer of faith. We hooked up with you and you're wringing your hands. Oh, no. You, if you, you just the bottom line is you just got to understand. You got to break those unholy alliances. You hooked up with people. You know, if you hooked up with people that aren't moving in, in faith and not moving in the things of the Spirit, they're going to not only influence you, they're going to influence you know, they're not, rather, not only going to influence themselves, they're going to influence you. They're going to hold you back. You have to live in that same mess. Oh. We get ourselves into some serious situations because of not using wisdom. Or simply because maybe it is using wisdom, but because God's people don't want to step up. They want, to, they, want to, they want us to step down. God's people don't want to step up and participate with the miracle of faith and signs and wonders. They don't want to participate with believing God and making it God's problem and God's issue, God's issue. I told the Lord the other day, I said, Father, this is a pretty intense ministry you put me into. I have to be, take all your persecutions and all their hatred that they hate you with. I'm the one who gets it. And that's what, you know, that's what the Scripture says. They hated me with the hatred that they had towards you. Huh? Because all I'm doing is standing in his stead. And so people go persecuting me, saying all kinds of things about me, dealing with their attitudes towards me. It's not even me. It's Jesus. It's him that people are persecuting. It's him that people are hating, finding problems with. Because, my goodness gracious, come on, folks. If I'm not standing in his stead, then please tell me. Where can we find someone standing in his stead? But the Lord takes it all the way from the, the way you treat the least of these, my brethren, all the way to the place that you treat those who stand in this place as his mouthpiece. You see what I'm saying? And if, should we be able to begin to live by the Spirit, walk in the Spirit, be filled with the Spirit? Huh? Well, we're going to be able to see our interaction continually with Christ Jesus on every area and dimension of our life. Huh? Should you do that? You would never lead somebody into sin. Huh? You would never violate something holy and precious and sacred as another soul who's come into the kingdom and been purchased by the blood of the Lamb. Rather, you'd be the opposite. You'd be a protector and a defender to make sure that they're being built up and edified and provoked unto good works. Amen. Amen. Well, we got those fruits. We have those fruits. And people are going to say something bad about, about us. They're going to have to make up lies. They're going to have to talk about the way we deliver the word. That's all they're going to find against us, how we preached. That's pretty pathetic, huh? That all you can find against somebody is how they preached. You didn't like their style. Huh? Just wait till you see Papa's style in full manifestation. Amen. Wait till you see Jesus' style. Eyes of flame of fire. Wait till you see his style. When he begins to deal with offenses and sin and iniquity and rebellion and things that pollute, huh? How he deals with leaven. Listen to me. I'm light. Are you with me? Somebody said, you John the Baptist. No, I haven't. I'm believing God to get to that place. I want to have that kind of anointing one day. I'm not there yet. Because I'm telling you right now. Jesus couldn't preach in modern-day churches. Paul could not preach in modern-day churches. John the Baptist could not preach in modern-day churches. Isaiah could not preach in modern-day churches because they had the zeal of God. They had a zeal for His holiness. And anything that they felt, it was contaminating that. Somebody said, I'm sensitive. You better get sensitive. And you never, you need, number one, you need to be sensitive about the, your offense towards God. Huh? Because I am sensitive. I know what violates things in the Spirit. And if you just walk with the Lord... You would know too. I mean, walk with the Lord with a greater commitment to saying, I want it now. Thy kingdom come. See, your kingdom come. Come now, Lord Jesus. Even so, come quickly. We're waiting. We're watching. We got the belt on. Oh, I, got, I got the lamp led. I'm ready to go. Come, just go. Let's do it now. Is, is he there yet? Look out the window. That anticipation has to be in our lives. Otherwise, we're not going. That's what the Lord Jesus says. That anticipation has to be in our lives. Otherwise, we're not participating with the hastening. Huh? 
I'm not interested in houses and land. I'm not interested in this thing and that thing. I'm interested in heaven now. Back, you're, come now, Lord Jesus. Even so, come quickly, Lord Jesus. Come now, Lord. I think that there is a possibility that way too many people are so wrapped up in their interest in this life. Oh, don't come yet. I'm not married. Don't come yet. I haven't lived. Don't come yet. I'm, I'm planning on getting a new car. And I want to come after Christmas. Or whatever goes on in the heart, because the head plays tricks on you. Your mind will play tricks on you. Don't come yet. I'm building my business. I want to be successful. Don't invest in this world. It's all going to burn up. It's all going to burn up. At, the be at best, your investment is so, so that you can make sure that you get the mark of the beast. At best. That would be the best. You're just investing to make sure that you're first in line for trade. Stamp me. Whatever it takes. No, in Jesus' name. No, in Jesus' name. I pray, I pray that you grab a hold of these things in God. You won't let them slip at any time. You just begin to redirect your... Look, I'm going to make it real simple for you. Just redirect your whole heart and affection to a relationship with the Lord Jesus where you please in Him. And you recognize it's impossible for you to please Him without the work of the Holy Ghost in your life. And so you're so thankful for the Holy Spirit. And he's the spirit of holiness, and he's grieved by every unholy thing. Now, we got to, if I got it laid out for you, he's grieved by every unholy thing. Well, I thought the blood of Jesus Christ uh, took care to where that the unholy looked holy. No, it doesn't. The unholy, the blood of Jesus Christ absolutely cleanses away all unholy things so that we might live in his holiness in his life. His life is holiness by definition, so he gives us his life. And then if anything violates that, to try to somehow contaminate his life, there's the blood of Jesus Christ to cleanse us from that so he can have that holiness, that life of holiness maintained. I want everybody to stand with me. I'm going to ask you this. I'm going to ask you this. I'm going to ask you to do this. I'm going to ask you to become in earnest about understanding the great peril that we are in. I'm going to ask you to just begin to say, Lord, you might have to say this. You might have to say, Lord, I really don't even understand. I, you might have to get honest. You might have to say, I am so consumed with just making the paycheck and getting the jobs done that I have to get done to my commitments to man that I just don't even understand. Because that's, what, that's why the Lord says you've got to get out of it. Because if your heart's captivated, entangled by it, you won't be able to understand. But I want to be able to understand the peril, peril and the condition that we're in right now. I want to be able to get it. And if you ask him, he'll show you. And you're going to be overwhelmed at the, the trouble, the state of affairs the influence that Satan has gained in the midst of the church. And then, then if you and I will get serious about this with God, he will give us an authority, first of all, not to come under the influence of it in our own lives. And then secondly, to be able to break the influence of it that stands in the midst of the church. So that there will be great Holy Ghost conviction and great reverence and great respect and and a great display of his goodness and of his power. Because if, if you don't reverence the sacred, there's not going to be any display of the sacred. If you don't reverence the sacred, or sacred there's not going to be a display of the glory of God in your life. Because he's not going to, there's no, there is no means by which to connect with him. Father doesn't want you to be. Father doesn't want you to be gagged. He don't want you to be under, 
a gag order. He doesn't want you to be silenced anymore. He wants you to learn how to cry out to heaven. He wants you to learn how to lift up your voice. He wants to teach you in your living room, in your prayer closet. He wants to teach you in your car driving down the road. He's looking. Father's actually looking. I want you to consider this. He's actually looking for us to make him first, to put him first, to make him important. He's actually looking for us to choose him at lunchtime, to choose him to go someplace to begin to cry out to him. He's looking for us. He honestly, people just think he's always so loving and merciful. He doesn't really care. He doesn't really even need us. So it doesn't really even matter. I'm not important. I'm not even on the radar. Nonsense. That's a lie. He's looking for us to choose him. He's look, Father's looking. He's look, his eyes go to and fro throughout the earth looking for someone he may empower. He's looking for people that will participate in truth and righteousness. He's looking for people to choose heaven, not hell. Choose him, not the devil. Choose righteousness, not sin. Choose to be with him. Instead of just being with yourself. Huh. I pray in Jesus' name that you do valiantly. I pray in Jesus' name that you truly would give yourself over to the kingdom of God. That you truly make his, his glory, his honor the most important thing to you. His words coming out of your mouth under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost, the most important thing to you, and you'll do whatever is necessary so that will be His words coming out of your mouth and not your own. You do anything you, is possible so that what he, says, what he said, as surely as I live, the whole earth will be filled with my glory. You participate with it, and you allow His river of His presence, of His glory, to issue forth out of your life, and you won't allow your members to be doing anything else. You won't yield your members to sin or to iniquity anymore. You go yield your members to God. You're going to yield your, your lives, your being, your attitudes, your emotions, your passions to Him. And we just get in this dynamic with Him. We say, Lord, okay, I want to do this. Show me how to do this. I want to be more effective at it. It's almost like people are afraid of desperation. Somehow, if, they, if I get desperate with God, it's going to look like doubt and unbelief. No, I want to help you right now. God, desperation's good. Yes. Hunger and thirst is, is two of the most extreme displays of desperation. Hunger and thirst is good. Hunger and thirst is good. If you've never turned your life over to God, I, I listen. I'm gonna, I wanted to say this. I remember people saying, "Well, I'm, I've been walking with God all my life." No, you haven't. No, you haven't. There has to be a moment where you're born of the Spirit. You have a miracle new birth. I want to make sure you're walking with the right God. Because there's gods. There's many. But there's only one true living God. Huh? The rest are idols. God's calling you. He wants to give you a change of life. Change of life. A change. A change. Measurable, radical change. He's calling you. He wants to take everything about you and make you different. If you're interested in that, then the miracle is easy to receive. Or you say, Look, I, Lord, I want your gift of salvation. I want heaven. I want the things that you talk about in your word, where we get to be with you and live under your rule and your reign. And where there's only righteousness and holiness. Where there's only love and goodness. Where there's only the things that belong <laughs> to your way of living. If that's what, if you want that, Christ Jesus is here to meet you at the point of your need. Literally, your need. Your need for change. He's here to work a miracle for you. So if you were crippled and in a wheelchair and you didn't have any feeling from your waist down... And you wanted to walk again. And you dreamed of wa walking again. You would have a great need. And if I was to say to you, if you come right now, the Lord will heal you, work a miracle for you. He'll heal you. And you'll be able to walk. He'll give you life back into your legs. 
then surely and surely you would come. Not because you want to go back to the wheelchair and push yourself around in the wheelchair. You want to get up and run. You want to start doing some stuff again. You want to dance. You want to move. It is the same with salvation, but even a much more important need and greater things at stake. People say, I'll do it tomorrow. Tomorrow is never going to come. Because the tomorrow disposition is always for tomorrow. It is never for today. And the more you wait till tomorrow, the more you prolong till tomorrow, the more you become rooted and solidified in tomorrow. Until then it's too late. Jesus is calling you. There's no place to begin other than at the beginning. You don't get good enough. You don't get right enough. You, the Lord doesn't give us a, His Holy Spirit because, you know, that we're all perfect and holy and everything. He gives us His Holy Spirit because of His grace and His mercy so that we can learn to walk in all of His ways and be in every way perfect and holy the way He wants us to live. He trains us. You, ne- you got to start. If you, if you want to be trained by God, there's no other way. You've got to be born in the Spirit. And then you can't get stuck in a ditch of religion. And if the pastor says you're in religion, then you need to say, you need to repent to try to defend yourself. You know how many people, they, the Lord has had me just wait on them. Wait. They're just more religious than have relationship. And the Lord just say, wait, wait, wait. And then I finally tell them, hey, you know, you got more religion, you got relationship. And then they run out of the building. They leave. Oh, I'm a bad guy. No, guess what? You go find another man of God, and he's going to tell you the same thing. To ultimately, you're going to find Jesus, and he's going to tell you the same thing. It just at that time, it's going to, it's going to be too late, depending on what, what. Because religion can cause problems. If religion ultimately destroyed someone's soul, it would be better you not have entered into life. If your religion brought shame and dishonor to his name, I mean, <laughs> God's merciful. All I can say is God's merciful. But I'll, let me go back to this point. If the, if the man of God tells you, you're the man, you're the woman, how could you be more haughty than King David? Huh? How could you do? Look at King David. He had the right to be haughty. But when the man of God said, you're the man, what did he do? He did the right thing. He fell down on his face. And he said, oh, God, forgive me. But when you are living in a rebellious age under this, where people are under the do- domination of a, call, a prince of power of the air called the spirit of pride. The pride of life. People need to be able to walk up and say, look at my life, pastor. Do you see any power, power of darkness ruling over me? Influencing me? Start being secure enough in God, transparent enough in God. Say, look, come on, I want to get this thing right. I'm, I, don't want, I don't want Satan, I don't want the powers of darkness to have any hold on me. I want to be God's, I want to be 100% kingdom of heaven certified. KHC, kingdom of heaven certified. Jesus is calling you. He's calling you. He's calling you. He's calling you. If you've never turned your life over to the Lord Jesus Christ, if you've never had the miracle of salvation, in other words, where the Spirit of the Lord has come upon you, giving you a new heart and new spirit, today's your day. Today's your day. We'll be back here tonight. You can come back tonight. I break every power, every mind-blinding spirit, every lying thing, every influence of hell. I destroy its effect. Right now in Jesus' name. The powers that would say there is no God, you lying foul spirit of hell. Those powers that would make a mockery out of the things of life and out of the things of heaven. In Jesus' name, I render you powerless. What should it profit a man if he gained the whole world and lose his own soul? 
Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Your life is far more than meat and your body is far more than raiment. And furthermore, the Lord says, cursed is the man who puts his trust in the arm of flesh. But he says, blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord and makes the Lord the sole object of his trust. So, Father, we thank you for the mighty outpourings of the Holy Ghost in this place. So, Father, I thank you right now in Jesus' name that today there would be a people that would decide that they're going to serve the Lord and serve no other. That they're going to understand that serving you is living by the Spirit and walking by the Spirit and giving place, Holy Ghost, for your wonderful glory and manifest power to be revealed through our lives. Jesus' mighty name. And I must tell you, in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. One more time. I'm going to call one more time. If you want to turn your life over to Jesus, if you're done living your own life and you're ready to start living his life, he's here to meet you with a miracle of salvation, make you completely new, break all the strongholds off of you. Every claim of death will be removed off of you. He'll write your name in a Lamb's book, in a book called the Lamb's Book of Life. He'll write your name in heaven. He'll give you the miracle of a new heart and a new spirit so you might be able to know him. Today is the day of salvation, not tomorrow, not later, now. Those of you who just find yourself as Jonathan, just wanting to rededicate and reconsecrate your life and just respond and just say once again, Oh God, I'm yours. I'm all in for you. You, you may come as well. The offering of your life. <laughs> the offering of your life. The giving up of your heart to the Lord is well pleasing unto Him. Your willingness to surrender. Your willingness to respond. Your willingness to come is well pleasing unto Him. It's the kind of offering that He will respond to and light it up with the fire of His presence. And fill you with every good thing. And establish you in every good way. Oh, in Jesus' name, I pray that you'll begin to function and flow in the power and the beauty of faith and the authority of His Spirit. I pray that you'll come to know the majesty and the glory of it where doubt and unbelief has no more power to ruin you, where fear has no more power to dominate you, where sickness and disease has no more power to influence you. I pray you'll come to know the majesty of what it means to be baptized in the Holy Ghost and continually filled with the Spirit, filled with His presence, so that all the display of heaven will be seen through you. The display of His presence upon your face, the display of His power through your life, miracles, gifts of healing, Word of knowledge, prophecy, tongues, interpretation of tongues. All these things that belong to that which God would do to establish all the beauty and splendor of his life in this earth. Oh, participate with the hastening of that day, the speeding up of that day. Participate. In Jesus' name, participate. Oh, Rabasa Oh, Rabasa Potokia Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
The mantle of God is here. The anointing of God is here. The fire of God is here. There's a presence of the living God right now to touch you, change you. I'm telling you right now, I, there, there is absolutely no way things have to be the, cha- the same. You don't have to think that somehow not, nothing's going to change because change is here. You're not going back to what you were doing. Change is here. Change is here. Change is here for you. Change is here for you. Come. Dear, come. You, dear, you. Dear lady, come here. So just give your life to Jesus, okay? Because I know, I know Satan's done everything to do, destroy everything about your life. So now it's let God have a turn. And do everything that he wants to do to give you a life. He wants to bless you with everything that belongs to heaven. He wants to heal you from your mind to your body, to your soul, to your spirit. He wants to make everything new. Sounds almost like a fairy tale, doesn't it? That he would make everything new, take all the disaster away, all the pain away. Because if you continue to live like you're living and that you've been living, you spend eternity in hell. You can't have hurt and pain and sin and iniquity in your life and be right with God. And Father so loved the world, he so loved you, he sent his only begotten son so that you could be delivered out of a certain death and an eternity without him. So are you ready to turn your whole life over to Jesus? I, you know, I already have in my life, but a lot of things have gone. It's crazy. This is, it's, that's kind of the report a lot of people have. I just want some back. Well, here's what you're going to have to do. You're going to have to start anew. Don't hold on to former things. Just start anew. God's giving you an opportunity to start new with him. He's giving you an opportunity to be established in the right way. To be born of the Spirit. To receive a new heart and receive a new spirit. And to be filled with the Holy Ghost. To be baptized in His presence just like they were in the, on the day of Pentecost. When they all began to speak with a heavenly language. And the glory of heaven filled their life. And ruled their life from that day forward. Are you interested? Okay. Well, just close your eyes and reach your hands towards heaven. Say, Lord Jesus, take full control of my life. I renounce the kind of life I've been living. I want to live your life. I run to you right now for your safety, for your salvation, for your change. I want heaven to be my home. I want to be taught your ways. Holy Spirit, Spirit, take full control of my life. life. Fill me up right now. now. Lord Jesus, Jesus, I take your blood blood for the cleansing for all my sin. sin. Holy Spirit, Spirit, go ahead and work a miracle in my life. Work this miracle now and fill me. (laughs) Hallelujah. (laughs) In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, I break every stronghold of darkness, every power of sin from off of you so that you can begin to live a new life now, right now. Right now, be filled. Be filled with the Spirit. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. Right now, be filled. Be filled. Be filled. Be filled. Be filled. Be filled, my lambrosia. Be filled, my gay resign. Be filled, my lang jessabora. No longer to be man soldier, but to be kingdom of God soldier. Hallelujah. Ha ha ha. Ha ha. Mandara. Built, man jesse. Built, man brusai. Built, man masatea. Built, man mongresatea. Out of your belly flows these rivers of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' mighty name.
<laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bon, bon, bon. This is the day. Man, the, a needy heart touches heaven. A needy and a willing heart touches heaven. God is not far away on a planet somewhere, way up in the universe. He's right here, right now, ready to respond to anybody who calls upon Him in truth. Anybody who begins to say, Oh God, oh God, help me now. Change me now. Lord, I need your rescue. I need your salvation. I need your deliverance. It's all it takes. Doesn't take much more than that. You change everything about your life. Hallelujah. Cinco de Monde. Lure ba 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 sata. Lure be be riman. Lure be 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 riman. Lure be 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 riman. Zere mama nangeo. Zere me me lingasa. Mala manje kasi karekaya. Mongele shangbai. Mombra satano. Gifts of the Spirit begin to function through your life. I'm telling you. Right now, in the name of Jesus, those things which God has ordained and promised, that prophecy, those tongues, those interpretation of tongues, in Jesus' name, they begin to flow out. They're not going to be hindered. They're going to be flowing out now. Flowing out. Flowing out. Things aren't going to remain the same. No. No. But the expressions of heaven, the expressions of divine glory, the, the expressions of His divine power, I'm telling you right now. <laughs> you know, the expressions of his praise. Mambrom Jatai. Ah, the prayer and the supplication in the spirit. Now in Jesus' name. Now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Now, fire God. Fire God. Fire God. The gifts of the Spirit are yours. The gifts of the Spirit, the flowing forth of the Holy Ghost is for everybody who's earnest. The flowing forth of the Spirit of God. These things that pertain to His majesty. He said, as I live, this whole earth will be filled with my glory. These things are yours. These things are yours. They don't just belong to me. They're yours too. Hallelujah. Now, you have to get out of the complaint. You got to get out of the doubt. You got to get out of the worry. You got to get into the shout. Hallelujah. Got to get into the shout. If they're ever going to be a reality, got to get into the shout. You got to get into the shout. If you ever want these things to come out, if you ever want these things to come out, you got to get into the shout. Sapataya, Mongolia Shikai. If you ever want these things to come out, you got to get into the shout. Hallelujah. Power of God. Fishy Thailand, Mongzakasa. The fire of the Holy Ghost. The fire of the Holy Ghost. Fire of the Holy Ghost. Azazadei Abrusha. Fire of the Holy Ghost. Mambanja Kigrashaya. Fire of the Holy Ghost. Baranai. Fire of the Holy Ghost. Manjessikara Stara. Fire of the Holy Ghost. Mambrusate. Everything changes. Everything's made new. In Jesus' name. Restored unto you. I'm telling you, there's a going home time. I hear that. There's a going home time. Some people are going to have to go back and go home and say, look, make things right. You ran away. You left. Hurt and offended. I'm telling you, you can go home. You're going to be restored. You can go home. You're going to be restored into your families. Hallelujah. No, no, my. I'm telling you, I don't care where you're at on the planet right now. I don't care where you're at on the planet. God has purpose to pour out His Spirit with great signs and wonders. He's purpose to make known His glory through your life. No matter where you're at, all you got to do is be hungry. All you have to do is be hungry. All you have to do is be hungry. Masataya nebe. All you have to do is be hungry. Ibrasatan. All you have to do is be hungry. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for the great display of your power through John's life. It's about time you stand up and say, Satan, you have no more power over me. And I'm not, I don't need your stuff. And I don't need to do your stuff. I don't need your stuff. I don't need to do your stuff no more. 
And watch how God invades your life and begins to show you something. Pleasures that no one ever knew about. Realms of glory that you never even imagined. A kind of life that fills you with ex such ecstasy, with such gladness. Nothing else can compare. It's not an imagination. It's not a fantasy. It's a reality. But God will only show you at the moment of obedience. At the moment of turning your whole life over to Him and choosing Him, not just with your words, but choosing Him with your actions. Not just choosing Him with the thoughts and concepts of your mind, but choosing Him with your deeds. Watch what happens. The first step in revival is walking out of the world, walking out of it, turning from it, turning from it. I don't care about what people are doing if there's not an anointing enough to cause you to turn from the world and turn into God alone. Then listen, something's seriously wrong. Now in Jesus' name. 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 Now in, listen, I'm going to tell you something. There is a place to press in. The, the, the springboard is, is, is like the altar call. It's like the springboard. Like this is the springboard. This ain't it. This, this isn't the end. This is the beginning. It's a springboard. It's an atmosphere. It's an atmosphere. I tell people, don't go to your knees in prayer until the anointing's on you. They can hit their knees. Some people go to the knees in prayer and they fall asleep. Huh? Let the anointing come on you. Let the anointing of God come on you. Hallelujah. And no matter if you're on your knees or on your face or walking around, there's a power of God, an expression of the Holy Ghost. Heaven is being advanced through your life, pouring out through your life. God has said, surely as I live, my glory shall fill the earth. That means by which he's doing it is rivers of living water coming out of our innermost being. Us participating with that new heaven and that new earth wherein dwells only righteousness. With everything that belongs to this world being burned up with a fervent heat. And everything that belongs to the prince and the power of the air that executes their authority over men being pulled down and thrown out. Cast out. Are you listening to me? The understanding. This is why we've been given the strength of the Lord, the power of his might. Ha. Authority over all spiritual wickedness in heavenly in the heaven spiritual wickedness in the heavenly realm.
name of Jesus. I don't want anything True. to die on me. Adios. This is this is this this is a springboard. This place right here is a springboard for you to now go deeper into interaction with the Lord, with the Holy Ghost. And the more you'll spend time with Him and the more you'll interact with Him and the more you'll cry out for the things that He says He wants us to have because there's no question about it. The Lord has purposed that the outpouring of the Holy Ghost be revealed through our lives so that those things that He wants accomplished and done in the earth can take place. And if we're not willing to do that, that we are not hastening the day of the Lord. And I don't even know that we could really truly even say that we're right with God. Because I don't know that there's any other expression truly of being led by the Spirit. Of walking in the Spirit and living by the Spirit. Because those are all in the context of a man who said, I fully preached the gospel from Jerusalem to Illyricum with mighty signs and wonders and the power of the Holy Ghost. This was all in the context of a man who, when he first met people, said, have you received the Spirit since you believed? This, and this is all in the context of a preacher who said, I speak in tongues more than you all and gave to us very clear instruction on how to function and flow and operate in the manifestation of the Spirit that was given to everyone. And this is the message of Jesus. You you drink and out of your belly shall flow these rivers of living water. This spake he of the Holy Ghost, which was not yet given. But when he was then glorified, these things were poured out, as Peter said in Acts 2, 33, which you see in here. Now, I'm... I tell you, I feel that I feel with all of my heart that I have wrestled with the things that hinder you this morning. I feel that I have wrestled and the Lord made very apparent to me this morning the things that hinder. Look, if you don't, if you can't see that, see what happens is I'll get flowing in the anointing and I'll just, I won't see anything. I won't be aware of anything. I'm just, I'm not even aware of people. I'm not even aware. I won't even know that you're there. You say, well, did you see me there? I didn't see you there. People just ask me, what did you say in the meeting? I don't know. Well, it didn't come out of my intellect. You have to listen to the tape. What did you say about such and such? I have not a clue. And I'm just being as honest as I can be. It's true. But then there are times like this morning where the Lord will let me feel what's in the way. And have to wrestle with it. And he does so for the purpose of breaking it. Destroying it. Dealing with it. Demanding a change. And so I pray in Jesus' name that every one of you would just go ahead and be benefactors of it. You don't have to walk out of here with sin in your life. You don't have to walk out of here with shame in your life. You don't have to walk out of here with sickness or disease in your body. You don't have to walk out of here with doubt and unbelief, thinking, oh, no, I'm going to live in the same kind of poverty, same kind of misery, same kind of situation as I've been living in. No. Because God has purposed that everything become new, and that begins first and foremost in your own heart saying everything's new because that's what the Lord has established and then being willing to walk out with a whole fresh look at life and say my goodness I'm living and abiding in his presence now to be taught of God now to receive all the things that he has for me look it's just a, it, when you get tired of living your own life and having it the way it's gone, come down to you up to this point father stands ready to rescue you save you and bring you into a miracle realm that you can't even begin to imagine it's just like a fantasy it's like a fairy tale but it's not because i'm a partaker of it i'm living in it and i'm no different father's no respecter of any persons no one's any different from anyone everybody else got the same opportunity but he says also in that same context peter said also in that same context he said god is no respecter of persons dealing with the whole issue of, of people allowing sin and iniquity in their lives. And saying, you must be holy even as I'm holy. And that's setting the bar pretty high. And it said, be holy as your pastor is holy. Be holy as your denomination defines holiness. Be holy as you think holy should be. He said, be holy for, as I am holy. Be holy even as I'm holy. The Father said that at least a dozen times in the Word. Old Testament and the New Testament. 
And that he empowers us to do it. Because from a human realm, from a human ability realm, our understanding, there's no way we could do that or be that. But if we're willing to be continually filled with the Spirit, no problem, because He's the Spirit of holiness, and we get to do that. If we're willing to live by the Holy Spirit, then we have the Spirit of holiness, and we can be holy, because God, the, God brings His holiness into our life, and we as servants yield to it and taught of Him, and we begin to learn how to say no to the wrong things and yes to the right things. And it's really that simple. And when we do wrong, we repent, and we change, and we say it's not going to be in my life anymore, and we set limits, and we set boundaries, because Father's purpose is that we rule over our own lives first, before we rule over somebody else, which we're going to if, we're, if we step into the ministry he has for us because we're going to rule and reign with him. Amen. We are. And the Lord puts the emphasis of it on the thousand year reign of bringing in. He brings, he brings the emphasis of the thousand years we should rule and reign with him. Why? Because there is the last dealing with sin and wickedness and rebellion. After that, you know, I don't know that we'd be ruling and reigning. I don't know. He just rules and reigns. Are you with me? There's nothing more. There's no more. There's, there's no death to defeat. No sin and iniquity to cast down. I mean, maybe we do. I'm just saying. The Bible says we'll rule and reign with them for a thousand years. Uh -huh. And so I want you to grab a hold of that now. I want you to participate with the hastening, the coming of the Lord Jesus. Speeding it up. And the only way you're going to do that is you're going to say, I'm going to stop doing it in my religious way. I'm going to get into the realms. I'm going to understand what it means to be filled with the Spirit. I'm going to understand what it means to put on the Lord Jesus Christ as a mantle, as a gifting. I'm going to understand what it means to have the mind of Christ. I'm going to understand what it means to, to walk in the Spirit, live by the Spirit. I'm going to understand this fresh baptisms of heaven. I'm going to understand what it means to take a hold of this realm of glory with all prayer and, and, and supplication in the Holy Ghost. I'm going to understand what it means to build up myself in my most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, and not just wait till ever, whenever, you know, it's not interrupting what, I, uh, what I'm otherwise doing doing with my life that's got to flip upside down you listen to me God has given me a mandate we're going to see we're going to see uh, ministry no longer serving business and business rather serving ministry because that's the way it's got to be and you need to take inventory of your life because that's what the Lord said last time we were together take inventory of your life because if you did you'll find out that many of you are trying to cause ministry to serve your business business needs to serve ministry Huh? That means your whole business is about ministry. Are you with me? That's a big, that's a big difference, isn't it? When your whole business is about ministry instead of your whole ministry being about business. Huh? Your whole, God said your whole business is about ministry. Amen. And He set the rules. And if you don't, if you're not willing to, I know it's a scary thing, but if you're not willing to step out and do it his way, you're not going to have his results. He said, you can take no thought for your life. He said, it's with total abandonment. He said, you're going to have to step out. And this is a realm of not human effort or human ability, but it's supernatural supply that the Holy Ghost gives that you're going to have to learn how to take all of heaven in. I am here to train you. I know how to take a hold of heaven. I know how to live in a heavenly realm and enter into a heavenly realm. And I'm here to participate with that in the Holy Ghost to train you. That's my job assignment. God told me, as he did all apostles, prophets, pastors, all apostles, prophets, pastors, evangelists, and teachers, that they are the perfecter of the saints. Thus, then I am here to participate with you learning how to do that. To give yourself to this realm. But you got to follow. And that which you do not honor, you will never receive from. And you just need to understand that. That which you do not honor, you cannot receive from them. That which you have normalized and made human, you cannot receive from them. That's what happened with Jesus. All they could see him was as the brother to Mary and Jez, uh, to Mary and and James and Yossi and a few others and the son of Mary and Joseph, you know, is not this, are not his brothers and sisters with us. So thus, you're going to have to start not looking on a human frame, but just turn everything over into the realms of the Spirit and say, look, we know no money, nobody after the flesh anymore, but after the Spirit, we recognize the giftings and the callings of God for the purpose 
of being able to hook up more effectively with the things that are going on in heaven so that we can participate with that Father's will being done, the reality of it. What is Father's will? Wipe it clean with fire and create only righteousness and purity and holiness. And if you can just get that simplicity, uh, uh, that simple of a view of what God's doing, it's going to be that much easier for you to participate with it. Amen. So, we love all of you. We're so glad that you're here. We want you to wrestle with us in these things. God has given us the ability to be strong with his strength and with his power to deal with spiritual wickedness in high places. In an unseen or what we would refer to as a heavenly realm or unseen realm. And we need you, we need you to throw in all the church. There have been those that said if all God's people would pray for one day, God would bring it to a conclusion. It would be done. I don't know that that's the truth, but at least it's in keeping with if all God's people would truly turn their lives over, in other words, to Father fully and completely, well, just for one 24-hour period. Once again, I don't know that that's true, but th that's the general gist of the verse of Scripture I read to you in 2 Peter 3 today. He said, this gospel of the kingdom must be preached in all the earth as a witness to the nations, to every nation, then the end shall come. This gospel of the kingdom is only by the demonstration of the same signs and wonders and miracles that Jesus had. When Father's looking for the precious fruit of the earth, he's talking about the manifested sons, those who function and act and move just like Jesus. You're not going to do that until you learn how to submit yourself to the Word of God and to the Spirit of God. Jesus was 30 years showing that he was completely submitted in everything to the Word of God, doing it God's way. Then for heaven to be open as he obeyed all righteousness and submitted himself to John's ministry. That was the only day. That was the day that heaven was open. He submitted himself to John's ministry that day. He, uh, heaven was open. He was baptized in the Holy Ghost. And he began to show us what it looks like to begin to move in the Holy Spirit. If we want anything, if we, if we have a value system of anything less, we are wrong. If we're willing to allow that to remain as in, in that state where that we have something less than what it is he revealed to us and showed us to walk in, we're wrong. Well, Father wants us to get passionate and hungry and desperate to have it all. Jesus said these works and greater works, I mean, you'll get shut down in churches today for saying anything about greater works. Because people don't want you to come and invade their space and make them feel uncomfortable. They want to be satisfied and happy with their religion. I tell you, if you're going to participate with God and doing it His way, then we're going to let the Holy Ghost have first place. And it starts, you're giving the Holy Ghost first place starts with you. It starts with me. It starts personally, individually, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, secretness if you would of our lives personal lives the secretness of our personal lives now let's have revival now let's have a moving of God let's have a moving of God that you must personally take responsibility for and recognize that you stand in judgment if you're not with not me but with father if you're not willing to take personal responsibility for the, because this is truly taking responsibility for the souls of men because what does it mean to go reach the souls of men to bring them in and watch there to be a display of nothing but purely human flesh in his house because then all they're going to do is they're going to get touched by the Father and they're going to come into the meeting and before long they're going to get discouraged and say there's nothing to it because they didn't have an encounter for me, salvation and reaching people and seeing them established in the things of God is a, revival is essential to that, which, which ultimately establishes the church flowing in the Holy Ghost as God has defined it. Now, you must hear me. You must listen. Because this isn't about my opinion and your opinion. This isn't about my will and your will. I'm telling you, this, isn't some, this is not something that I'll about compromising on or sit around and talk about come let us reason together this is the mandate of heaven this has got to be this way and no other way and you can't tolerate it any other way any more than I could tolerate it any other way so then now you can be understanding of my zeal how the zeal of the Lord has eaten me up for his house come on now come on now there's not supposed to be a sick one among us a crippled one among us there's not supposed to be a diseased one among us 
There's not supposed to be anybody who has anything less than all nine gifts of the Spirit working. Ultimately. And truly at least one. For the gifts of the Spirit, manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man. Hallelujah. Praise is a manifestation of the Holy Ghost. Uh -huh. As long as it's coming up like a river. Anybody who can stand in the presence of the Lord and not have a shout of rumbling praise gushing from their, their belly and from their lips, you haven't encountered him yet. That realm of the baptism of the Holy Ghost. You haven't. I don't care how much you speak in tongues. It doesn't matter to me. Because the, Holy, the tongues the Holy Ghost gives takes you to a place of yieldingness and submission to the Holy Ghost. And he's a shouter. He's a praiser. He's a worshiper. So you're going to find, you're going to have to wipe this lake clean some, some instances because you don't know where it all went wrong. Just wipe it clean. And the Lord allows us to do that. Give us a fresh new start with him. Amen. Just be simple. Amen. Hallelujah. Just understand. Just read the Psalms and find out how he's telling you over and again what to do. Praise me. Praise the Lord. Praise you the Lord. Worship him in the sanctuary. People say, well, doesn't, doesn't the Lord just want to make me happy? Isn't he just interested in making sure that I've got everything I need? Isn't the gospel just really all about me? I hate to break the news to you this morning. Jesus is interested in doing the will of the Father and pleasing the Father and making the Father happy. And I'm telling you right now, I'm a witness along with many others. God is good to his people. And takes good care of his people. But it ain't, a, it ain't in the context of self-interest and all about me. It's in the context of thy will be done, Father. We're about your will. We're about your glory, about your honor. You can sing all day long. Oh, Lord, glorify your name. We want to honor you. We want to praise you. You're worthy of it. But how about the shame that you would bring upon his name with behaving yourself in any way that is not in keeping with the actual manifestation of the Holy Ghost in your life. For that's what it means to live by the Spirit. And so it's high time God's people start identifying the areas of their life that clearly is not the Holy Ghost and say, I'm done with it. I'm shutting this down. We're shutting this business down. It's going belly out. We're not funding it no more. We're, not, we're turning off the lights. We're turning off the water. Hallelujah. We're not funding this. We're not going to, we're not, we're not, we're not uh, supporting it anymore. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. If you'll identify it, things will begin to change. If you don't identify it, it will continue on the same. And you'll be saying, are we giving the Lord honor and glory and praise? And no, you're not. Maybe a couple of times out of the week, but then the rest of the time you're giving them shame and reproach. And, oh, Lord, we reproach you. Huh? It's terrible when somebody sings it. It's worse when somebody does it. Hmm? Terrible when somebody sings it. It's worse when somebody actually participates. Huh? <laughs> Should we sing the manner of style in which we live? Uh-oh. No, let's sing those things which belong to Father's word and to the truth and then be conformed to it. Amen? Amen? Let's shout it out. Let's speak it out. Let us, the communication of our faith be effectual by the acknowledgement of every good thing that is within us. Let us participate with it. Just like Father said to do it, let's take these words that he's put in our mouth and in our heart and let's speak them and let's watch what God will do. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Find a bunch of people, hug them, tell them that you love them, bless them in Jesus' name. Nobody be in a hurry.